السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all his companions, his entire household, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to grant every one of them goodness and to bless every single one of us and to grant us all goodness. Brothers and sisters, a very important clarification that needs to be made from what we said yesterday. We all know in the books of seerah, the books of history that have recorded the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the story of the martyrdom of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib is made mention of. And the story that is narrated commonly known that Hind binti Utbah radiyallahu anha, we made mention of her yesterday. It is reported that she was from amongst those who had chewed on the liver of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiyallahu an. That is incorrect. And this is something that needed correction. We mentioned it yesterday and we should never be embarrassed to correct ourselves. In fact, Wherever there is a difference of opinion between those who have recorded history and those who have recorded hadith, we should remember that those who have recorded hadith are given preference because they have what is known as sanad, which means the chain of narrators. So for some reason, yes, it is correct that Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu anhu, his body was mutilated, but to degrade Hint bin Utbah radiallahu anha to the degree that we've all been making mention of her having chewed the liver of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, it requires a clarification and for us to say that that is inaccurate, although it has been made mention of in so many books. And this was brought forth by a little bit of research that was done. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and ease, so much so that Wahshi radiallahu an was not a slave of Hind bin Utbah, but rather he was a slave of Jubair ibn Mut'im. So it was Jubair ibn Mut'im who had told him to do what he did and it was not Hind binti Utbah radiallahu anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and may we be from amongst those who can spread what is correct and learn from that which is incorrect that no matter how popular the story is, but it actually requires clarification. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. This evening we will be talking about the one whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved the most, so much so that he was known as Hibbu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who was loved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the only companion from amongst all those who followed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose name is mentioned in the Quran. فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِّنْهَا وَطَرًا زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا Allahu Akbar. Allah makes mention in Surah Al-Ahzab of the name Zayd. This was Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu. So what is his story? Why was he so loved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Let us take a look at what happened. His mother's name was Su'da binti Thalaba. She was from Bani Ma'an. And she was married elsewhere. She wanted to go home to meet her family once. So she took her child with her and she had gone. And what happened is Haritha, who's the father of Zayd, had made sure that she joined a caravan that was, uh, that was trustworthy in order to get to Banu Ma'an. And according to the narrations, she got to Banu Ma'an and at some stage, either whilst she was there or on the journey back, they were, they were waylaid by a group of people. They were attacked by a group of people from Banu Qain. And what happened is, they were taken, their property was taken and from amongst them, little children who were there were enslaved. And this was the habit of the pagan Arabs, which was stopped by Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So it was also the habit in the European era at that particular time and even beyond. And we, we read that it was across the globe that this was a habit. When people were attacked, they were enslaved for no reason. And the attack was solely to be robbing their property, what we would term highwaymen. And highwaymen were known across the globe in parts of Europe and Arabia and elsewhere. So what had happened here is Zayd ibn Haritha was a little boy, approximately eight years old. They took him and they went to Ukav. Ukav was 
in the Arabian Peninsula, one of the festivals where they used to buy and sell things. And you know, they had marketplace where people used to bring their products from different parts of the peninsula and sell them there. So they had a lot of young boys whom they were selling at the time and young girls. So they sold Zayd ibn Haritha, who was a young boy into the market. And who bought him? Hakim ibn Hizam. This man radiallahu an later accepted Islam, but he was the nephew of Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiallahu anha, who later married Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So what happened to this young boy? He was taken captive and he was sold. I want to pause there for a moment. There are so many people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen to be the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, yet they were brought to Makkah al Mukarrama by different means and different stories, all miraculous. We heard about Salman al Farisi, we heard about the others. And subhanallah, this is one of those stories where he was brought as a slave, enslaved and brought to be sold. It reminds us of the story of the Prophet Joseph or Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. May peace be upon him where he, he was also sold in the market as a slave later to become one of the top leaders and the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a prophet. So from this we learn that sometimes in our lives negative things happen in order for a positive door to be opened later on. Do not become depressed. Do not be people who, who actually lose hope in the mercy of Allah. You need to know Allah always has a better plan, but you need to have firm conviction and you need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. So he was sold and Hakim ibn Hizam brought him into Makkah and when Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha, who was the aunt of Hakim ibn Hizam radiallahu an, went to meet him in order to welcome him home from that uh, festival of Ukad and so on, and to see what he had done. He said, oh my aunt, I've bought a few slaves. I want you to look at any one of them and take them as a gift from me to you. Subhanallah. So she looked at the faces and she chose Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu an, young boy. And he, he was dark in complexion. He was short and he was a little boy who looked quite fit and he looked decent, quite a shy type of a boy, subhanallah. So she took him and she kept him quite well. And a little while later, a few years later, she married Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some narrations say that a few months later and some say a few years later, we know a little bit of a time later. So when she married Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said, I would like to give you a servant as a gift. And that is this young boy. So who was he? Zayd ibn Haritha, given as a gift and a servant to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the two did not part from that day. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam treated him so well, so well that I will tell you something that will bring tears to your eyes. Subhanallah. They, he treated him as though he was from his own family. So obviously now when Su'da, Binti Thalaba went back to her people and told them this is what happened and our son has been taken. They started hunting for him. So the father whose name was Haritha Ibn Sharahil, what he did is he started hunting for the son and they did not find any news about him for a long, long time. And they did not know should we pray for him as a dead person or should we have hope that he's alive? Nothing until one day a group of people from the same clan had come to Mecca to engage in the pilgrimage. And whilst they were engaged in tawaf during that period of pre-Islamic ignorance, they saw Zayd ibn Haritha. He saw them, he recognized them, they recognized him. So they said, hey, what's happened to you? So he told them the story. I'm with a man here. He's known as Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And I'm here in Quraysh. They sold me for 400 dirhams. And this is who I'm with. Those people went home and they told Haritha. And when they saw Haritha, they said, we've seen your son. Immediately without seeing the evening, Haritha collected whatever wealth he had and he took one of his other sons and they rushed to Makkah al Mukarrama. And they arrived at the door of Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hashimi al Qurashi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was prior to prophethood. Prior to prophethood, imagine. They knocked on the door, who are you? They entered, so on. Well, you know, you are good people, you people are from Quraysh. Okay, where are you getting to? Subhanallah. You people are the ones who give water to the Hujjaj. You are the ones who help those who are poor and destitute. You are the ones who do so much good. And we have come to you with a plea, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was the plea? The plea is that we want our son from you. And who is your son? Subhanallah, Zayd ibn Haritha. Zayd ibn Haritha, 
Yes, we are here with whatever amount you want. We will pay you and we want to take him back. This is his story. This is what has happened to him. Subhanallah. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I give him to you without any money. Why should I want money? I give him to you without any money. But just one thing, call him here and see if he wants to come with you, let him come. And if he wants to stay, the condition is you allow him to stay. Amazing. So they called Zayd ibn Haritha who was delighted to see his father and his brother. Subhanallah. Do you know these people Zayd? Yes, that's my father. This is my brother. Well, they are here to take you with them. He looked at them and says, I'm not coming with you. Subhanallah. The father says, Oh Zayd, you choose to be a slave and we are here to free you. Zayd ibn Haritha says, Wallahi, if you know this man whom I'm with, and if you know even a little bit of how he treats me and what he does with me and the respect and honor that we have for each other and the love that we have for each other, you will understand my decision. Subhanallah. Wallahi, there is greater hope for me with him than with you. Subhanallah. This is who? Zayd ibn Haritha. Before prophethood. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was very touched by this so much so that the narration say he went to the Kaaba and made an announcement for Quraysh to know that this boy is my son. He is freed. And at the same time, when I die, he will inherit me. That means he's no longer a slave, a free man. And it also means from this day on, he will be known as Zayd, the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zayd ibn Muhammad. So Quraysh. They were very excited because obviously it's a good deed done by one of their own who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to call Zayd, Zayd ibn Muhammad. And when, when Haritha ibn Shirahil saw this, he was happy and he told the other son that, okay, we can go back now because we know that our son is okay and he's safe. Perhaps we may find out about his news later on and so on. But they left him there and they decided to depart. This was Zayd ibn Haritha. The love was so much. That everyone used to call him Zayd ibn Muhammad. The day of revelation, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came down to Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha, we all know that the first from amongst those to accept Islam, Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha, was the first human being. She was the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she accepted Islam. After that, from amongst those who were servants, the first was Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anha. And we have Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the first from amongst the men. And we have Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, the first from amongst the children. Subhanallah. These were those who were closest to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stop for a minute. When those whom you live with bear witness that you are a good person, then indeed you are a good person. Because they see you 24-7. So when your family says this is a good man or this is a good woman, then that is the truth. But when other people bear witness for you, perhaps they only know your good side. They have not yet seen you. When you get angry, you could be a disaster. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. This is why the hadith says, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you are those who are best to their family members. This is something unique that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. So those who were closest to him are the first to accept Islam. Think about that very deeply and it should tell us more about the truthfulness of this beautiful message of Islam and how we should be. If we were to say something, those closest to us should be the first to say, yes, this man is telling the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease and may he make us from those whom those we live with can bear witness that we are decent people. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, this is Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhu. Thereafter, the Quran came down with a big clarification regarding Zayd ibn Haritha. What was the clarification? He was so close to the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to call him loved son of Muhammad, Zayd ibn Muhammad, Zayd ibn Muhammad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who chooses parents, not me or you, no one. It is Allah who decides whom your father will be. And on the day of judgment, you will be called by your father's name, according to the most correct narrations. In fact, that is the narration. Some people say, no, you called with your mother's name. The truth is, it is your father's name. And Allah says, <laughs> Call them with their father's names. That is what is justice in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
You want to know what is right? You want to know what Allah declares? Allah says, I chose his father. You call him so and so, son of so and so, the real father who is his father. Even if you've adopted him. So they knew that Muhammad adopted the child and called him my son. So Allah says, do not call him your son. Say he is the son of Haritha. Allahu Akbar. This was something heavy. But for Muhammad وسلم, it was not heavy because it came from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it destroyed one of the deep rooted cultures of the people at the time. They used to adopt and they used to say, that's my son. And they used to say, change the name to the degree that the child himself does not know who the father is. Subhanallah. Islam says that is prohibited. It is the right, the basic right of every human being to know who their father and mother is. Subhanallah. So, if it is deception, you're not allowed. Sometimes I know in today's world, people might want to have a surname that might show that this person is part of us because we take care of them on condition that it is not deceptive and on condition that the person knows clearly who they are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Wallahi, it's becoming tough because sometimes we do not learn a lesson from this very story of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It was the pagan practice to say you know once i adopt you forget about your parents if if you want to know them you're no longer mine if that is the way we think we have forgotten what islam stands for these verses were solid verses that broke up a massive culture that had been trending in makkah al mukarrama and at the time may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses and then there was another verse also in surah al ahzab where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين الله أكبر. That Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was not a father of any one of the men from amongst you. You know his children, the males, had all died in infancy and childhood. صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Allah says he was not a father from a, from, for, of any one of the men from amongst you. But instead he was the messenger and he was the final of the messengers. So this was Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Qurashi. He instructed the people, do not call him Zayd ibn Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa Call him his real name, Zayd ibn Haritha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. Thereafter, there was this culture that was also amongst the people at that time saying that if you had adopted a child, he was your child and he inherited you and this is what happened and so many other things as though he was exactly equal to a son that was from the same mother, same father. So what happened is at some stage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to advise Zayd ibn Haritha to marry Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu anha. May Allah be pleased upon all of them. So upon the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zayd ibn Haritha, who came from the home that I've just mentioned, married a noble woman from Quraysh known as Zainab bin Tijahsh radiallahu anha. But the marriage did not work. Not because anyone was bad, no. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted a certain ruling to be made clear and a certain practice of the pagan Arabs to be broken forever. And that was that this person whom you say is your son is not your son. So when the divorce took place, Allah instructed Muhammad وسلم, to marry Zainab bin Tijash. And this instruction came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he married Zainab bin Tijash radiallahu anha, all of the people knew that this means that this person can never be a son. We can never call them complete sons of ours. They are only adopted children. And this is why in Islam, if you want to look after an orphan or adopt someone, there is a limit to it whereby you look after them, you care for them, and you may give them whatever you'd like to give them in terms of goodness. But when it comes to inheritance, you need to write for them from the one third that you have control of because they are not going to automatically receive from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. Something that's important to make clear. And this is why we say the sunnah and the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is so complete that all of us have lesson from it. All of us, no matter what your life is all about, you will always draw correction from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa inspiration as well as guidelines. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. 
So my brothers and sisters, the verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَقُولُ لِلَّذِي أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ زَوْجَكَ وَاتَّقِ اللَّهِ وَتُخْفِي فِي نَفْسِكَ مَا اللَّهُ مُبْدِيهِ وَتَخْشَى النَّاسَ وَاللَّهُ أَحَقُّ أَن تَخْشَى Allah says, remember the time when you were telling the one whom Allah has blessed and the one whom you had favored as well to fear Allah and to hold his wife and not divorce her. Yet in your heart, you knew that Allah had instructed you to marry her after he divorced her. Subhanallah. So Allah says, don't fear the people. Don't worry about what the people have to say. Worry about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is more befitting for you to be worried about. I think the lesson is for us all. Sometimes we don't do things fearing what people will say. But Allah says, what are you worried about people? Worry about me. If it is right according to Allah, forget about what the masses have to say. And if it is wrong about according to Allah, then forget about what the masses have to say as well. If they are encouraging you to engage in that which is wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So some people mistranslate this verse and they happen to insult Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by saying, Oh, he was in love with Zainab bin Tijah. Na'udhu billah. That is not true. What is it that Allah says you kept in your heart whilst you were telling Zaid, Look after your wife, but in your heart, you had something that you were keeping. Do you know what it was? It was the instruction of Allah that he knew in his heart. That's what it was. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us all that when people are struggling in their marriages, you don't just go along and break the marriage. You look at it and try your best to make it work. So that's why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa kept on telling him, be careful, look after your wife. Don't let this break. But when it broke, he ended up marrying her. All this was the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand this was Zayd ibn Haritha. And this was Zainab bin Tijahsh radiallahu anha. And this was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with this story of Zayd ibn Haritha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us a lot. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. So much so that some of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have said that when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Zayd ibn Haritha, coming from a journey or coming from afar. He would get up, he would rush towards him, he would hug him, give him a tight embrace and kiss him. Subhanallah. This is how close the relationship was between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Zayd ibn Haritha, the only companion whose name is in the Quran. Subhanallah. Radiyallahu anhu. And he was a person whom it is reported that when the Prophet ﷺ went to Ta'if, Zayd ibn Haritha was one, the one who was with him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anh, he strived to be a barrier between the stones of those of Ta'if and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so much so that he was hurt as well, as young as he was. Really, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. He passed away, he, he took part in a lot of the battles and he passed away in the battle of Mu'ta where we heard Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the leadership to Zayd ibn Haritha. If he were to be martyred, then Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. And if he were to be martyred, then Abdullah ibn Rawaha. So the first one to be martyred was Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anh in the year, the eighth Hijri in the battle of Mu'ta. He is, he is buried in Jordan. So if you visit Jordan, you might see that they will tell you here is the place where Zayd ibn Haritha is buried. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Just a quick note. People ask, why did the battle of Mu'ta take place? Well, the Prophet ﷺ sent messages to the various parts of the peninsula and a little bit further. And from amongst those messengers, Al-Harith ibn Umayr al-Azdi radiallahu anhu was sent and he was killed. So when he was killed, when an ambassador is killed, what happens? It creates a big disaster between countries. So at that time, the ambassador of Muhammad ﷺ was killed. The army was made of 3000 men sent to Mu'tah to face the Romans who had killed the ambassador of Muhammad ﷺ. That was the reason why this had taken place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. Our next hero, Ammar ibn Yasir, Ammar ibn Yasir ibn Amir ibn Malik radiyallahu an. His story is also amazing and unique. His father was Yasir ibn Amir. And he was a person who had come to Mecca with two of his brothers, Al-Harith and Malik. The reason why they came to Mecca to Al-Mukarramah was to look for a fourth brother of theirs who was lost. He was a lost person. So they came to look after or to look for the fourth brother. 
And this was the father of Ammar ibn Yasir. When they came to look for him, they did not find him. So two of the brothers decided to go back. And the third one decided to stay in Mecca. He liked the place. But all this was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them from amongst those who were the first to accept Islam. So Yasir, who is the father of Ammar ibn Yasir, he stayed and he decided to strike a deal with Abu Hudayfa ibn al-Mughira from the Makhzumi clan. Why? Because he had no relatives. So if someone harms me, I need someone who's going to defend me. So he struck a deal that, you know what? We will be together and we will, I will do this and you will do this. And the deal was struck, subhanAllah. The two of them had this treaty between them. And this was common in the Arabian times. So Abu Hudayfa told him that, look, this is a slave girl of mine. Her name is Sumayya bint Khayyat. You can marry her. So Yasir was a foreigner from outside. He ended up marrying the slave girl, subhanAllah, and she became known as a Sahabiyyah slightly later. What happened is something amazing. When, when they had a child, they named the child Ammar. Now Ammar, he is similar in age to Muhammad sallallahu if not a little bit older. So when Nubuwa had come in, prophethood had come in, then Ammar ibn Yasir heard from the people that there's a man in Makkah saying this and saying that, and he just kept on hearing. Until some few days later, he said, no man, why must I keep on hearing when I can go and get it from the source? So he decided, let me go and get it right from the source. Subhanallah. And so he visited Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the house of Al-Arqam. You know, you know, Darul Arqam was known as the house of knowledge because that is where the knowledge was beamed from. So he went there, he asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam a few questions and he accepted Islam. Ammar ibn Yasir. He went home, he spoke to his mother, Sumayya bint Khayyat radiallahu anha. She understood the message, she accepted Islam. And then they spoke to the father. He understood the message, he accepted Islam. The first complete family to accept Islam, subhanallah. Or so many members of the same family. But this did not go down well with Quraysh and Banu Makhzum and Abu Hudayfa ibn al-Mughira and Abu Jahl and the others. They began to harm them more than they harmed anyone else. We will hear about what happened to Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu inshallah soon. But to inform you that these people went through so much more that the mother of Ammar ibn Yasir Sumayya bint Khayyad became the first martyr in Islam. She was stabbed by Abu Jahl himself and she was harmed before being killed. She was persecuted to the degree that they used to take them out into the desert heat and they used to harm them so much, dragging them, telling them to disbelieve in Muhammad. They did not until she was martyred. And her husband was also martyred, radiyallahu an. Yasir ibn Amir, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all goodness. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed them on one occasion, he looked at them being harmed. Wallahi, we cannot describe what type of harm was inflicted upon his mother, radiyallahu anha. It was brutal. It was barbaric. It was shameless. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us all goodness and protect us all. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at them helplessly in the sense that the only one that can help us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Sabran ala yasir fa inna maw'idakumul jannah. Bear patience, O family of Yasir, for indeed your appointed place is paradise. You will be achieving paradise. From this we learn that they were from amongst those who were already told that paradise is yours. Because we will meet in Jannah. What does that mean? That means you're going to be in paradise. So as much as we have the 10 who were told that you are from paradise, known as Al-Ashara, Al-Mubashareena Bil Jannah, we started our talks with them. They were a group of people, but they were not the only people. So why do we call them the 10? We call them the 10 because that was on one occasion where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam got up and said 10 names in a row, one after the other. You are from paradise, you are from paradise, you are from paradise, you are from paradise, saying 10 names in one instance that those were known as the people who were the 10 who would get entry into paradise. But there were others who were also told that you are from paradise on different occasions. These were from amongst those. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he make us from amongst those who are in paradise as well. So my brothers and sisters, this man Ammar ibn Yasir, 
he struggled and he suffered. And he suffered so much after the death of his parents. When he took part in the battle of Badr, he was the only companion. He was the only companion who had his parents martyred by the people of Makkah. And now he was revenging and retaliating in Badr. The only companion who had come to Badr knowing that these people have killed my parents. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him ease and goodness and us all. May Allah grant him Jannah and us all. So Ammar ibn Yasir, he was a man whom when the people of Quraysh were harming him so much, they told him one day as they were harming him with severe harm, persecution, that we want you to praise our gods. So it is reported that he uttered the word in a way that they were happy that okay, you've praised our gods. And the people who were Muslims at the time went to Muhammad sallallahu to tell him that Ammar has left Islam. So Muhammad sallallahu said, no, he has not. In his heart, he has Iman. It is full of Iman. So when Ammar ibn Yasir came, Muhammad sallallahu asked him what happened. He said, oh messenger, I, I did not mean to say these words, but I was harmed so much. They told me to praise their gods. I ended up saying a word which made them happy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked him, what about your heart? He says, my heart is very clear. My conscience is extremely clear. I'm a Muslim and I believe in Allah alone. So Allah revealed verses. وَلَكِنْ مَنْ شَرَحَ بِالْكُفْرِ صَدْرًا فَعَلَيْهِمْ غَضَبٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Allah says, Those who disbelieve after having believed, they are the ones who will receive severe punishment besides those who have been forced to utter words when their hearts are full of iman. They are the exception. Subhanallah. And from this we learn that if you are forced to do something or say something when your heart is actually not with it, you will be judged by Allah according to what is in your heart and not according to what your actions have been depending on what that matter was. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a lesson. This was a Sahabi. It is reported that at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was appointed, appointed as the governor or one of the governors of Kufa. And later on, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu replaced him with someone. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu asked him, O oh Ammar, are you upset with me? Are you sad that I have replaced you with someone? He says, O oh Umar ibn al-Khattab, O oh Amir al muminin I was even more sad when I was the governor because of responsibility. Now I'm a happier man. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us all goodness. It's a big responsibility. Those who are in positions of leadership, and who lead correctly realize that it is more a responsibility than an honor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, it is sad to note that beyond the age of 90, Ammar ibn Yasir died in the battle of As-Siffin between the Muslims. We all know As-Siffin took place. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu on one side and the forces of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan and the others on the other side. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all those who have taken part. Wallahi, if we look at that history, it brings tears in our eyes. Ammar ibn Yasir was the oldest of the lot, according to some narrations, almost 94, 95 years old. Radiallahu an. He was a man whom the Prophet sallallahu had said that he will be in paradise by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here he is being murdered and martyred and pillaged by people who are Muslims themselves. And I want to pause for a moment again to learn a lesson from this. My brothers and sisters today, today too, we are struggling more at our own hands than we are at the hands of the enemy. If you were to take a list of countries where Muslims are being slaughtered today, you will find that places where the Muslims are being pillaged, where they are being killed at the hands of the Muslims are far more than places where they are being harmed by the enemy. And this brings us to the note of this evening. Brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Really, as we are speaking, they are struggling. It brings tears to the eyes. Wallahi, it leaves us helpless except for the fact that we have hope in the mercy of Allah. It happened to those before us 
And as much as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a Nabi telling the family of Yasir, Sabran ala Yasir, fa inna mawidakumul jannah, we hope and pray that we too can bear witness that the people of Gaza, may Allah forgive them and grant them Jannah too. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our helplessness. There is hardly anything we could do sometimes. And even if those who could do things would do things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge and in control. May Allah make it easy for those who are in position of acting to act in a way that the matter can be sorted out. Wallahi, it bleeds the heart. And I'm sure every one of us, feels not only for those who are suffering in Gaza, but if we were to draw a list, it would be endless to be honest with you. I was trying this evening to draw up a list of the places where the Muslims are struggling. Believe me, I came up with more than 20 countries. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. What do we learn from this fighting that happened at that particular time? What do we learn from the fact that enemies made the Muslims fight in the name of Islam? My brothers and sisters, let that not happen to us. May Allah safeguard us and grant us the love for one another and the ability to stand up and respect one another. Even if we have differences, it does not mean we need to kill one another. May Allah correct us and grant us safety. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.